Alexandra. I'm from Germany. And now I live in a beautiful country that lies in the Atlantic coast in West Africa. Cameroon. In Germany, second-hand clothes are collected and put in containers. I wondered where these were sent to and realized that they were sent to the African markets with Cameroon being part. I also wonder what effects these things have on the economy, the environment and the cultural identity. I read on the webpage of the German Red Cross that 1.2 million disadvantaged people in Germany benefit from these dresses. And in 2013, 13.5 million euros were raised from the sale of such dresses to mainly Africa and Asia to be used for humanitarian action and catastrophic support. They sell them to cover basic costs of transportation. That's what they say. And to make money, as we heard. Most of these Western organizations believe they aren't any part of the failing African textile industries. They put the blame on poor power supply, no water, corruption and other bull****. All reasons in Africa. I really hope Draufsicht recorders get words like bull****. Now I have the burden to find out what the truth is and to enlighten myself and many <laughs> who don't know anything about Africa. Oops. I'm one of these I do not come with timeless and ultimate truths. Nevertheless, I think it will be good if certain things were said and clear. To me, um, it's a kind of a mixed feeling. At one point, I think it's, it's, it's okay because first of all, it caters for the needs of the local people because they are really affordable. I mean, I think that's what, that's the basic reason why someone would go for a used cloth or a new cloth because it's more affordable. And also, it, it, it's providing a lot of jobs for young people. There are thousands, I mean, hundreds of thousands of young people who are in the business of second-hand clothes. We have very good, beautiful fabrics out there. We have very good, beautiful clothing there that are made in Cameroon out there. But now, because these things are in the markets at very affordable prices, consumers prefer to go for the cheaper things. As Africans, we produce cotton. Cameroon, in particular, is a cotton-producing country. But globalization has made in such a way that we have opened up so much. And when we open up the theories of economies, we cannot compete with the industries abroad that are already established and they are enjoying economies of scale. Which means that textile production capacity to the Cameroonian market is only 1%, meaning that 99% of the dresses we used in Cameroon have been imported. And statistics on the Ministry of Commerce states that Cameroon spends about $150,000 every year just to import dresses, most of them secondhand from China and from other European countries. I'm Liz Ngwane, the creative director of Magos Mode. Uh, Magos Mode is um, an African brand based in Cameroon. We created Magos Mode to, to give Africans, especially Cameroonians, that luxury to wear um, African prints, but in a luxurious manner. As a designer, that is, that is actually a big problem to us. But before talking about our problems, I want us to know that uh, as much as we cry and criticize everyday second-hand goods, they are also a means for, for others like income for others but it really affects our our business as designers because they are cheaper and um, 
our clients prefer getting them than maybe getting handmade cloth from us. So it really, really affects our business. There's something we call standard. Some people will say our dresses are not standard. And those standard now, you ask yourself, what do we call standard? A dress that is, for example, let's take the Northwest traditional regalia, which is extremely beautiful. Who will put the standard? Is it us here in Cameroon or is it the West? But if you meet a Cameroonian on the street and you ask him, why are you not using Sikam? He will say, because there is no standard. It's true, they may not have the standard, but if we encourage them by consuming the product, they will acquire the capital, they will enjoy economies of large scale production, and they will improve. That is what Rwanda did today. They have, they have a very vibrant textile industry. Many countries, that is what they have done. But if we continue opening our borders, we just continue being a dumping ground. There is what we call benefits of economies of large scale production, which is economies of scale. So when a company is producing large, prices will be low, and many people will find themselves consuming it at a lower price, or maybe something just a little bit more than what they were doing with the second-hand dresses. I feel uh, really disappointed that these are things that are offered to the Red Cross free of charge and then they cover logistics to bring it to Africa and then they sell it to Africa. And the most, the biggest part of my worry is the fact that some of these clothing that come to Africa are really of a very degradable state. Sometimes when I, when I have reflections on this African fabric and second-hand importation stuff, I really want to look at it from a point of view of Africa also having a big role to play in this. Cameroon having a big role to play in this. Sometimes our government and the policy makers being who they are, I mean, they're they are raising revenues too. The government, for example, from these second hundred clothes, when they are at, arrive at the airport, the, the taxes they pay and stuff like that before they get to the consumers. Okay, imagine in Cameroon alone, like between 2015 and 2017, about 126 billion francs, CFA, was spent from retailers buying second-handed clothes. Wow. So this says that if this amount of money is being spent, there is much of it going into government pockets. They are not putting up policies enough to protect local consumers. They are not putting up policies enough to even protect the health of Cameroon. And it sounds at first phase like this is development, but it's not development at all. Devel so what would be development? Development to me would be empowering the people to be able to create something that can last, something mm -hmm. that can take them through generations, something that can be sustainable. That's what development would mean to me. There's no country in the world that has developed for multinationals. Multinationals will never develop a country. A countries are being developed from small and medium-sized enterprises. That is what happened in the US. That is what happened in Europe. They will come and put in, put in place their structures. They make their money. They send back the capital to their, back to the countries where they originate from. At the end of the day, we we'll simply end up being workers and ending our salaries. One of the, the major problems we also have is production, especially when it has to do with maybe electricity. I've been producing an outfit and I have to give it in an hour and there is no light. And your client does not even want to think that, oh, there was no electricity or that or that. Because when he or she comes to you, they expect to have their outfit. Now, when they don't have that outfit, they are forced to go to second-handed imported goods we are already, which are already ready to wear. Because I think during productions in Europe, they don't face such situations about electricity breakdown, water, uh, or, or all those things. When they produce their production, within an hour they can produce massively. But within an hour in Africa, that's why it's handmade. You produce maybe a dress. So the pricing cannot be the same. 
And because of the economy of our country or the income of our country, most people turn out to go for second-hand goods because they're cheaper. Take a country like Cameroon today with, this, with the second highest water reserve in sub saharan Africa, but we don't have drinking water. So if a Western company decides to come and give us drinking water, the cost is our governance. They are simply reacting according to what they saw. It's true we need electricity to produce those things, but we have the capacity, we have the knowledge, we have everything. If our government had built strong systems, we can produce hydroelectric power, 25,000 megawatt. But I will tell you the production capacity of Kamun today is less than 3,000. Uh, it could be it, it could be anything. It could it could be the fault of Africans. I mean, it, we could just be the architect of our own problems. But as far as you are contributing, even at one one million to someone's problem, you are part of the problem. For me, I like the, the okra cut dress, you know, because this our material here in Cameroon, they don't have power. So when you buy the material, you will only lay well for one year, two years, it's finished. But, but the okra, when you buy, you will even well for six years. It's still good. That's why I like the, the okra cut dress. When I'm going out, I wear what I'm sewing. But in the house, I like the okra because, because it's not warm. When I wear the okrika and go out, it's not good for us Muslims. You have different dress, different hetai, different rapa, and different okrika. So you have to wear up down like this. There is no charitable organization in the world, there is none. Even the UN is there for business. The Red Cross has simply discovered, has simply seen that Africa need those dresses. And they use it, they make their money too. They cannot send dresses to Rwanda, why? Because Rwanda through a win-win relationship that they enter with China, they develop their textile industry. In as much as there are exogenous causes, of Africa under development. In the 21st century, we are extremely intelligent. We've studied in the best universities in the West. We have people who can stand, who can do many things for our country. But the problem is we are still in countries where politics dominates expertise knowledge. I mean, the other bad thing about these clothes also that many people don't know or many people don't say much is the health factor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of these clothes really come already used and mind you that in Cameroon, Africa, we consume second-hand clothes from underwears. Imagine someone using an underwear somewhere in Europe and is infected with a disease and then you come to Cameroon and then you just buy it and maybe you just do we wash it normally. Some will not even wash and they put it on so it can give it health-wise is not good. But I would have thought it's sterilized or something before. Uh, I mean, I, I, I am a user of second-hand clothes as well, mm -hmm. myself. Yes. And oftentimes I've bought dresses that look, I've seen dresses that I really like, I want to buy, but they are horrible. They are really horrible. Like, you see it, you know that this was worn. I mean, your instincts are telling you that this was worn by someone who is infected. So some of those dresses, they are not treated before brought here. Come
Cameroon, we have fabrics that are produced here. They are, they, they, they are weaved here from the beginning. Like everything, it's not like we have them. The, the fabrics imported from maybe somewhere in Europe and then we stamp our markings on it. No, we have fabrics in Cameroon that are produced locally. And that is the identity of a Cameroonian. That is the pride of a Cameroonian. When you wear something that that speaks to the world about who you are, it's, it's, I mean, personally, the feeling is different. The feeling is totally different. When you walk with a Cameroonian dress, how yes. do you feel? When I walk with the Cameroonian dress, I feel like, yes, this is me. This is the real me. This is the untamed me. This is the real African me. Uh -huh. When I walk with a, Cam with, an, with a Cameroonian dress. Precisely in Cameroon, you discover that most of the garbage around our homes is made of second hand dresses. But if we go in for our traditional attires, the locally made dresses, you see that we buy a few of those dresses which will make us look presentable in the society. The traditional fabric you can put in for as many years as you take care of it. Because if you buy those two, just like the one I'm putting, which is just around 10,000 francs. You buy it, you can wear it new for five good years. Identity is the greatest. One, you see somebody from the southwest, you know that this person is from Bakwelo. You see somebody from, Bame, from, from the northwest, you either say this person is from Kong, from uh, Mankom, or from Banso. As simple as that. Identity with our traditional way. The second handed dresses that come into our country, indeed, is a pity. Buy a trouser for 1,000 francs and you wear it for three months. I have done it. If you come to my house, those are dresses I take to the farm. Going, going for something which will last longer. Buying a dress for 5,000 francs that you can use for years, it will be better. Cameroon, for example, is one million, and I, I cannot supply one million outfit now because of less manpower. But imagine that one million persons are buying every month from designers. Calculate the amount of workers who will have, and calculate how that will boost up the economy. So I also think it's time that our own products start getting out there. People should also import our own dresses. A country can only develop when they export. It is true, it may be cheap. But if you look at it at a macroeconomic level, it is better to buy an expensive good from your, that is produced in your home country than to buy a cheap good that comes from abroad. Why? Because when you, produce, when you, when you buy an expensive good that comes from your home country, the money circulates in the economy. But when you buy a cheap good that comes from abroad, money leaves the economy. advice to Cameroonians is that we should really go in producing our local fabrics and then we sell it to the international market so they can also consume it and consuming it will bring more income into our country and that way Cameroon will develop. 
those dresses can actually be reused in Germany. They can be sent to the open market, to the free market, and anyone can get them from there. I also think that uh, a fraction, but very little, of these dresses can be reserved for, I would say, emergencies in Africa. For example, there are floods and people have lost their properties, have lost their clothes and everything. These things can, they should be used for the purpose that people give them for. I think our major problem is the government. Because when the government stopped the importations of second-hand goods today, those women in the market who sell second or men in the market who sell second-hand goods or second-hand imported goods will become our own retailers too. They will come to our own industry too. And secondly, we want the government to put in their money there and all they should put in support in the textile industry because that's our major problem. Our textile industries are poor. We don't feel comfortable in consuming Cameroon fabrics or in using Cameroon fabrics to quit because the quality is very low. In politics, win-win simply means that if we come into a contract of 100 francs and the argument was that I have 90 francs and you have 10 francs, if at the end of the day I have my 90 francs, you have your 10 francs, it is win-win. Relations don't exist between countries for fun is for economic gains which means that every country will try as much as possible to exploit the others there is no equal relationship between a giant and a, and a small country it never exists there is no way america will enter into uh, into an agreement with Camus where the same of them will be at equal footing it doesn't exist but Cameroon as a small country must be very resilient, must develop mechanism which will make him not to be vulnerable to the US. It is not the US problem on how you go about it.